All right, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Mahomes got his second ring already. Jalen Hurts balled out too, man. What a game. But uh, now what? XFL, let's ball out, baby! In case you didn't already know, the XFL is back. Again. The XFL initially started back in 2001 to capitalize on the real American dream, more football. Though it wasn't as formal or rule abiding as the NFL or other pro leagues. It was really all about spectacle, encouraging rough play, trash talking, and even end zone jacuzzis. After all, it was a joint venture with the WWF. Ultimately, after poor ratings and millions of dollars lost, NBC was forced to pull the plug on its investment after just one year. Though that's not to say everything went to waste, as some of its ideas were actually incorporated into the NFL. I mean, you guys like when players are mic'd up, right? But now, after nearly two decades, the XFL was back and better than ever. In 2020. Yeah, so for obvious reasons, the XFL was forced to shut down again, though this time it was completely out of their control. But this time, they're back for good. The success of the USFL last year shows there's certainly a market for spring football, so how does the XFL plan to capitalize? If I had to describe the new XFL in one word, it would be exciting. The league has a clear focus on the fan experience, from its unique broadcast style to even incorporating pickums into their app for an interactive watching experience. They've also implemented tons of unique rules and formatting to keep things interesting. The differences are obvious from the start of a game, as even kickoffs are unlike anything you're probably used to. Teams line up 5 yards apart near the 30 and aren't allowed to move until the returner touches the ball. Not only does this encourage more returns, but it also minimizes big collisions, making it safer for the players too. Punt returns are different too. If a ball is punted into the end zone or out of bounds inside the opposing 35, the ball is spotted at the 35, again emphasizing returns. Replay also plays a bigger role in the XFL. All plays are subject to review from the game's replay official, who has the authority to correct errors on non-reviewable plays or intervene for player safety. Replay also ties into how challenges work. In the XFL, as long as you have a timeout remaining, coaches are allowed to challenge any play once per game. And I mean any play. Did that receiver look out of bounds to you? Challenge it. You think the refs missed pass interference? Challenge it. Disagree with that holding call? Guess what? You can challenge it. Above all though, the new rules make the end of games especially interesting. If a team is tied or trailing in the fourth quarter, they can try a fourth and 15 from their own 25 in lieu of an onside kick, though an onside attempt is still an option. Add in the fact that you can score up to 9 points in a possession and you can imagine the insane comeback potential just from these two rules. Hell, the Battlehawks pulled one off in their first game. The replay official can also correct any issue in the last 5 minutes and during overtime, which is also different in the XFL. OT consists of both teams alternating 2 point attempts from the 5 yard line. This continues until each team has used 3 attempts or if the game is still tied, then until a winner is decided. Oh yeah, I should explain the whole 9 point thing. PATs are another unique change in the XFL. Kicking the extra point isn't an option here, your only choice is to go for it. After a touchdown, you can go from the 2 yard line for 1 point, the 5 yard line for 2 points, or the 10 yard line for 3 points. This format means even huge deficits can be erased before you know it. There are many other rule changes, but I think this should give you an idea of just how different things can be in the XFL. But enough about rules, you probably want to know who you'll actually be watching. Well let me tell you, the XFL is definitely not lacking in talent. There's all kinds of former NFL players and college standouts on league rosters. Just to name a few. AJ McCarron, Hakeem Butler, Kalen Balaj, Abram Smith, Josh Gordon, Brett Hundley, Cravon LeBlanc, Martavis Bryant, Geronimo Allison, Vic Beasley, Derek King, Marquette King, Paxton Lynch, Marcel Aitman, PJ Hall, Cowboys legend Ben DiNucci, and you get the picture. If you're still not sold, look no further than Taylor Heineke and PJ Walker not only starting games in the NFL this season, but netting a few wins too. But that's just the players. Seasoned NFL fans should recognize every XFL head coach. And you don't need to be a football savant to point out names like Heinz Ward and Wade Phillips. That's in addition to guys like Greg Williams and June Jones serving as coordinators. Oh yeah, one of the owners played for Miami or something. I don't know. Anyway, the main point is these guys have experience, and they're in position to put out a great product because of it. And of course, we can't talk about the XFL without mentioning the unprecedented levels of access on the broadcast. Not only are the players mic'd up, carrying on the legacy the league started back in 01, but coaches and even officials are too. Okay, hey, check, 
Check 15 to the left. 15, hey. 15. Go. Uh, hunt. And to the left to Kirkland. Back shoulder on the spot. Houston on the board. Besides it just being cool to hear behind the scenes, I think this is great for casual fans to learn more about the game. I mean, if you want to learn about defense, you can't beat coaching from Wade Phillips. Get it to a three score game. 13 points ahead. If we go 21, they got to score three times. I just had to play four defense. Here's James Moore. Wide it up. Match the inside the field. I'd run the ball as fast as I can get, get the fuck out of here. Huh? Interviews are conducted routinely throughout the game, too. You may see a reporter interview a player after they score a big touchdown, or even ask a coach about the decision to punt. John Trey Kirkland, describe it, that, that touchdown play right there. I said it hit the gritty. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Fans can also benefit from the transparency and officiating. No more wondering what the refs are discussing, instead you can just listen yourself. This doesn't just apply to officials on the field though, even Dean Blandino, the XFL's VP of Officiating and Rules Innovation, is mic'd up in the command center, so when the play goes to review, you get to hear every detail. Looking at the catch at the sideline, I've got a really good look, I've got control, and I've got the right foot down and bound, so we're just going to give you a new spot. So we're going to go to the 46, it's going to be first and 10. First and 10. It's going to be on the right hash. Right hash. And we're going to go on the ready for play. And we're on the ready. So first yep. and 10 at the 46. You got it. Long story short, there are a lot of reasons to be excited about the XFL. So if you're itching for more football to watch, you're still new to the sport, or you just want to see a fresh twist on the game you love, you should definitely give the XFL a shot. Who knows? Maybe this time it really is here to stay. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, go ahead and drop a like. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel more than you know. Subscribe to the channel too, it's not just XFL stuff over here. The NFL is still king after all. If you're excited for draft season, you definitely don't want to miss the next few months of content, so subscribe and click the bell to get notified whenever I upload. But enough of the formalities, thanks again for watching and y'all have a good one. Peace.